Oh God! <laughs> Welcome back to Comic yes! Book Nation, your one-stop shop for all things geek oh culture in the official podcast, comicbook.com. And as you can see, we are in a Star Wars kind of mood today. It is a good day to be a Star Wars fan. We have some big things to talk about this week. Obviously, as I said, we got big Star Wars things to talk about because Daddy's home. Darth Vader made a comeback this week on Obi Wan, and we are going to get into all of that. But our fandom goes deeper than that on this show, as you guys know. So today, even though I have my regular stunning co-host Janelle Wheeler, hey everybody, and Matthew Aguilar, what's up, everybody? We had to reach all the way out to a galaxy far, far away and bring you guys a special guest today, Matt. This was. This was a lot of your undertaking. Please make the grand introduction. Oh, man. So, I mean, we're going to be talking a lot of Star Wars, obviously, and a lot of Obi-Wan. So who better than to have Obi-Wan Kenobi's Bonnie Peace join us for a little talking of the episodes and interviews so far? How are you? Hi, I'm good. Thanks. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much for <laughs> taking the time to join. And sorry for blasting you to another galaxy far away with the music. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> I just, just want to adjust my volume, so it's... it's I don't know. Anyway, it's fine. It was fun music. Oh yeah, I'm so sorry. Our commenters <laughs> try to tell us all the time. Like I said, I think it was riot control music at one point to really just like sonically stun a crowd into kind of sitting out. <laughs> that's how we net fans on this show. But uh, thank you for joining us, Bonnie. Awesome. Thank you. Awesome. And Janelle, I believe you. Yeah, I'm just, question. I'm just going to kick it off really fast uh, to just ask you, what was it fun returning to Star Wars? And when <laughs> did you actually find out that you were going to be back in this? Yeah. So was it fun? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> um, so much fun. And I, I really like I know it's really cliche to say I was pinching myself, but I actually literally was like looking around at the sets and being like, OK, like, don't take it for granted. Um, oh it was awesome. And so I found out about it, I guess it was like late 2020. And I'd heard rumors that they were doing a Kenobi movie for a while. And, and then, yeah, a message came through, which I didn't even know that that's what it was. So it took me a second to respond. Um, oh gosh. And then, yeah, then I was talking to Deborah Chow. And when I saw her name and I realized I was talking to her, I was like, okay, it's, it's probably Kenobi. Wow. Um, but yeah, I so it was a while before. I can't even imagine. Like, did you guys were obviously delayed a little bit, correct? How, like, did yeah. you have to just sit there with your mouth like tied shut? Like, how did it feel like waiting? Yeah, no, exactly. Started? There were a lot of delays, you know, the, all the COVID stuff, mm -hmm. and it kept kind of getting pushed back. Um, and yeah, I couldn't tell anyone until I guess they announced it in March last year. So as soon as that went up on Instagram, I was like, okay, finally I can oh, tell people. Because I'd been saying, yeah, I'm, you know, I'm I'm going going away for this and you know, this thing that I can't Redacted. tell you what it is. This yeah, is favorite word. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's great. Kobe. Oh, 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 oh I think he's Kofi? frozen. Kofi's frozen. Oh, well, I'll just jump into the next one. We've heard that there's early versions of the series that were massively overhauled in 2020, like we just touched on um, after the production delay. Was anything altered in your role that you know of? So I guess I, I don't really know, but I I think so. I think there were some adjustments. I think so. In, I think in my favor, but <laughs> I don't froze. really know how it all worked. I totally jumped in. Front no, no, of thank Kofi. you. Thank you for saving my biggest Star Wars fan ever, <laughs> and I feel like such a jerk. No, 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 you did. No, I always appreciate the help because technology, right? Um, yeah, no, uh, that question was born out of kind of Indira Varma kind of saying that her role of Tala was greatly changed. And mm. as the series goes on, we, we kind of learn that the, the delays of the pandemic actually did a major overhaul on kind of a lot of the series, you know, bringing Darth Vader and Hayden back in, changing right. kind of around some of the dynamics. So I was really curious about if there was other versions of the story that you saw for your character. No, I didn't see anything else. So I, I hear that there were overhauls, a, a big one, I guess. I heard um, Joby Harold, the writer yeah. actually said that. Um, but yeah, I didn't get to see them. So all I get to see is what I ended up with. So <laughs> I'm happy. Well, one of the things too that's that's popped up, you know, early on in Obi Wan is that we see Owen is not such a big fan of uh, the Jedi ways and and the traditions and Obi Wan Obi even yeah. speci <laughs> specifically. <laughs> yeah. um, and even still, you know, even even 
at that and not liking them still kind of goes out of his way when he doesn't really have to to make sure he's okay and, and not give him up. So we've seen some of that. You know, how does Baru, what can you tell us about how she feels about that? What her level of, if she holds any animosity or, or grudge there? Yeah, so I won't give anything away because that would be bad. But um, <laughs> yeah, I would say, I mean, Baru's whole role and all her biggest care in the world is Luke. So she just wants to take care of Luke. And, you know, we've seen in, in A New Hope, the older Baru was saying, you know, he's not a farmer. So like she does, she does understand um, that Luke has a different destiny. But yeah, I think she just wants to be his mom and care for him. And that's pretty much, she just wants the best for him. And everything else kind of falls by the by the way. Yeah. yeah, I think so. I think, you know, I mean, you, you'll get to see how it unfolds, but I, I love how Owen's roasting Obi-Wan. <laughs> I love how the fans are jumping on that, you know, roasting like Owen. <laughs> I love that. So for her, I mean, that is kind of a great distinguishing characteristic of kind of what makes Beru kind of uniquely special along with Owen in Luke's life is She's not so much for the cause or the larger destiny she cares about. The kid is kind of a fair way exactly. to put it, right? Yep. Ever since he arrived in her arms as a little baby, she just took him on. And yeah, she's a total mother figure. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, I'll take the next one, which is the prequel trilogy has been de divisive at times. But it seems like as time has gone on, there's been this complete kind of resurgence that the generation that grew up and that was their introduction to Star Wars, they now... You know, they fight for that, and they, the love for that is very palpable enough so that, I mean, Hayden has talked about this. How do you feel about how time has kind of changed perception towards the prequels, or have you seen any change? I mean, I've always had a pretty good experience with fans saying that they loved the prequels anyway. I've been to conventions and things over the years, and I, I feel like it was pretty well received. Um, there definitely were people in my life who have said, you know, ah, you know, the prequels weren't as good as the originals. And, and people for sure have said that the originals were their favorite. But, but yeah, it's totally, I see how the, the younger generation who grew up with the prequels now, they really do love them. And I'm hearing that more and more. Yeah, more than I ever have before. Someone will say, oh, they were my favorites, which I haven't actually heard that before. So, yeah, I guess it's a different generation. And I'm glad that they're, they're getting the love. Also, can we just address these people you mentioned that, said oh it's not as good as but are these like close people to you because if like if yeah, I'm actually. In a movie, oh my god okay <laughs> if i am in a movie i'm telling you this right now to like my entire family anyone that comes after if i'm in a movie and it's and like i don't care if it sucks please tell me it's awesome <laughs> I, I know I want yes people in my life thank you very much you better support me damn it <laughs> i know yeah and you know maybe maybe these people were not like such star wars fans they were just more exactly like people who had seen them or something um yeah i, no, like I, I would family. I'd like support. That's a bit of a downer, but, <laughs> yeah, man, but no. geez, you know, I don't care if I'm in Mac and me again, you know, Mac and me. Uh, <laughs> I feel like seriously, family, mostly right? it's been pretty supportive. I really, <laughs> that, that's awesome. Like your family's the only one, right? You go out, you're like, yo, I'm in star Wars. And you're like, you and the originals. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah. family. Well, and I know um, you can't, you know, we can't get into big spoilers and things like that. Um, but just telling us what you what you can, you know, do we see as the series goes on, we're seeing Obi-Wan kind of come to terms with how the world is, but also discover that, like, you know, maybe it's not, you know, there's still people out here doing it. There's still opportunities to be doing good out there. And maybe, you know, he's shut himself off a little too much. And, and we're, yeah. we're seeing that growth. Do you feel like there is also a similar uh, an arc that is kind of similar to how Baru and Owen will we'll see things. Do they also kind of have an arc throughout the series in any kind of way they, like that? They definitely have an arc, but if I say what it is, it's going to... No, 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 totally absolutely spoil. understand. No, 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 I know, but I, like, I really want to tell you, but it's, so it's, it, it's definitely an arc. Um, yeah, but Obi-Wan's arc, obviously he starts off really defeated. He's like <laughs> lost all hope. Poor Obi-Wan, it's so sad to see and definitely he, yeah, he has a journey where it leads more towards um, the original Obi-Wan where he's clearly in a very different place. But that's actually a really good piggyback to this last question here. Is there anything that you can tease or any specific moment in any episode that fans are just going to lose their minds over? Like what, 
any kind of teaser you can give us? Um, okay, let me think. <laughs> <laughs> Don't get in trouble. <laughs> I know, exactly. Speak, speak carefully. Um, I will say that the final episode, I think, is going to be extraordinary. So Mind blowing. Yeah, really, like, look out for that, for the fans. It's going to be, I think it's going to be. Man, that needs to be quite a <laughs> Yeah, I know. <laughs> Well, that's actually really good marketing. Like they should just tell everyone to answer the last episode. Just make yeah, sure. stick around. Make sure you watch all of them. Yeah, <laughs> that is so great. I gotta <laughs> just sneak one last question in there. As Star Wars is expanding, and we are seeing this kind of, you know, all around expansion of the series lore into different things. This series has brought in kind of a deeper look at a young Princess Leia and what she went through. Mm -hmm. Is this just kind of like a one-time event return for you? Or do you think in the future we could have more opportunities to see more of you? So I, it definitely came to me as a limited series. Um, so that's kind of just all I ever expected. It's those, it's those six episodes. But now I'm hearing Ewan McGregor say certain things about how he would love to come back. Um, and a few other people have been saying, you know, they'd like to. So I think they're maybe it sounds like they're thinking about doing something else whether Baru and Owen would come back you know I guess I'm yet to see I, I haven't seen we'll have to see that and see if the fans like what they see as well if we get but. young Leia don't we need some time with we've gotten baby Yoda and young Leia we can't spend some time <laughs> with young Luke Lucasfilm I'm just exactly saying. exactly yeah so I mean I guess we'll see how much the fans like what they saw in in this one and of course, I'd love to I'd love to do more. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say I, I do want I I love like so far I know I'm a sucker for Grogu all the time. I love everything Grogu. Yeah, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but Young Leia has been so uh, amazing, and I know like COVID gives me a hard time because like I know like I'm still I have a two and a half year old daughter. All I see this child in everyone, <laughs> every child that pops up on screen. I'm like, oh my god, that could be her when she grows up. So I know she's so amazing. Oh, and actually, she's wonderful. So, so firstly, Vivian, who plays little Leia, is so incredible. I mean, so adorable, right? Just everything about her. Uh, but even in the script, I mean, it was so well written. Her character that already it was jumping off the page, and I was like crying and laughing and everything as I read it. Yeah, yeah, she's it's, incredible. It's been fantastic. And like someone in the comments mentioned, if that's the tease for the finale and that's after episode three, which was pretty epic un unto itself, then that is one hell of a tease. So we are very excited uh, for the finale and, uh, you know, all the best success. We'd love Me to talk too. to you again once uh, everything comes out. And Thank you so much. I know then we can actually spoilers. talk about the details. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm sure. like, details. well, I don't want to give anything away. <laughs> no, you guys, the comments, stop it. I'm not asking for a young Jar Jar series. You guys yes, Jar Jar. I love Aww. Jar Jar. I love Jar Jar too. <laughs> He's the Wonderful. best. And yes, okay. Ahmed so Best is so great. I saw the comment in there about uh, stealing props. I would totally steal props. I, I am just oh, like yeah. right now, I am just exiting myself from any potential movie and TV role <laughs> because <laughs> I'm saying lie to me and I'm going to steal things from the set. So, yeah. oh, from from um, when we filmed episode three, actually, not that I stole this, but they had put kind of hair extensions like they wanted my hair more, bl more blonde. So I did actually get to walk away with Brew's blonde bits, which I still have somewhere. Nice. Yes. And, and this time I didn't get anything from the set, but they they did give a lot of gifts afterwards. So I've got like a hat from Ewan and oh. some some really fun things from Deborah. You know, really great keepsakes. Oh well, that's pretty cool. See, awesome. awesome. yeah, going hold on to that investment. That, oh yeah. yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I, I was tempted to give it away to some Star Wars fans in my life, and I'm I'm thinking about it, you know, because it would mean so much to them. I'm thinking. Awesome. <laughs> well you're kinder than me that's stuff yes. <laughs> thank you so much for uh, joining the show and seriously all the best success cannot wait it's been great thank you so much thank you no Bonnie Thanks. thank you <laughs> uh, I guess we got to follow that up with a, with the rest of the show she's uh, awesome <laughs> yeah I mean I, I mean that was really it for me I, I mean I'm really done now but uh, that's fine apparently <laughs> we're to do more than that so uh, let's keep going with this uh, I guess that's a good segue into our discussion of Obi Wan. Do we want to jump into that, Episode or do we need three. to take a break? Uh, well, let's do it. Let's do it. We can. Yeah. This out. Yeah. So let's just keep it Star Wars while we're here. So Obi Wan Episode Three, as you know, Vader's back, baby. Here we go. This is what the people have been waiting for. The main event. 
Uh, well, not the main event. This is just the first part of the main it event. It felt like a main event, though. You yeah. nailed it. <laughs> um, if you've been a Star Wars nerd digging into every aspect of the series like I have, I mean, you know there's going to be two duels that were going to take place. So this was the first Obi-Wan Vader duel. Uh, but this episode was generally stacked in kind of, I liked the way they paced it because it felt like a whole movie kind of sort of. Yeah. And it felt like a middle chapter of a Star Wars movie mm -hmm. where, you know, you had these people on the run. I mean, it's like Empire, right? You're on the run. Somebody's after you. You get to this kind of trap at the end, and it doesn't always, it doesn't end very well for the hero. The hero's not, like, very heroic. He, he kind of has to get help to get out of there alive from Vader. So there's a lot of beats of Empire in there. Uh, that said, I liked all the beats. Uh, the things that I didn't like and were critical of in Episode 2 kind of swung around and became things I really enjoyed about Episode 3. The Leia journey with, with Obi-Wan, I felt, was so much better in this episode and their little road trip on the mining mm -hmm. planet. Uh, just from the things of, like, in the crazy shots of okay. Obi-Wan seeing Anakin in the distance and knowing he's coming from him and that fear and him trying to play, like, calm dad for Leia and do that. The ride with Zach Braff's crazy character, the Empire, <laughs> and the Stormtroopers. And the whole thing about farming. And, like, this, that whole sequence and the tension and... The, checkpoint tension that was all good and then the unexpected twist of you know indira varma's character being a double agent and that whole thing was all great and that in and of itself would have been a great episode but then you get this third act where you know it jumps from vader searching and there's probes in the air to no we're going like right onto the planet and that surprised me because i thought they're gonna drag it out like another Same. episode oh the probes are in the air they gotta find them the end episode will end like we know where he is let's go get him no it just turns into nightmare fuel, right? Like Vader yeah. comes back and whoever like looked at this script and said, no, we got to get away with bringing Vader back before a new hope. And we can do this like brilliant and like great way to do it. Um, yeah. This was just pure nightmare fuel. Just Obi-Wan hiding in like a horror movie, just staring out, seeing like Michael Myers come down, you know, a street in Haddonfield and just start whacking off, you know, whack. Oh my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> start whacking people. And, um, yeah. Just, Knocking people off. I mixed up my metaphors there, tragically, but uh, knocking people <laughs> off and yeah, trying to draw him out and him having that panic moment. And there's a lot of deeper character and work that Ewan McGregor and Hayden Christensen and all these people are doing where Obi-Wan is going through it right there where, you know, all these things he's been doing about, no, I shouldn't jump out. I can't expose myself. I have to kind of hold back, you know, come to a head in that emotional moment. And he has to try to kind of half ass lead Vader away while keeping him at bay so Leia can get away the real thing he's trying to do and keep Vader from sensing her and all that. And it was just great, man. And when, you know, that fire pit stuff, woof, bro, like, yeah, that was, that was somebody hard. tweeted, like, how long somebody think Vader's had that loaded up in the chamber? But it, yeah, that yeah, was hard as nails. That was, uh, that, that was some pretty sadistic moment. stuff. And they make you feel it because you're like, oh, that's not going to happen. Like, somebody's going to get him out of that. No, bro is on fire. Like and yeah. made and made perfect sense from where, like, you know what I mean? Like it wasn't just done for shock's sake. Like it fits perfectly within yeah. what that character would do, their motivations. I mean, it's fantastic. Mm -hmm. it's, the show is so good so far. But episode three, really, I'm I agree with the comments too. Like, I didn't think they would give us Vader. And the, and with you too, what you were saying before, like this would typically be a finale. Like this yeah. episode is typically either the episode before. Or a finale style episode, and to get it midway through is pretty fantastic. Yeah, Janelle. Yeah, I mean, honestly, I was just like shocked. I couldn't believe what I was watching. I was like, it just did not. It did not feel like an episode three. And I'm incredibly impressed with Disney Plus with this, like making this happen in episode three. I tweeted, "That is the most afraid I've ever been of Darth Vader." Like that is absolutely petrifying like you said nightmare fuel and just um it's really hard to kind of i'm glad you brought to light all of the other moments from the episode because we're all kind of so swept up in the vader hype but the whole entire episode was really really solid so mm -hmm. yeah, yeah i i it's it's nice also to see obi-wan struggling because you you know the kind of character he is he's such a a warm presence in, yeah. in the prequel movies, right? And the times you've seen them before and you understand how it got to this point. But it's nice to see those things present themselves at several scenes, right? When he fixes Leia's droid. And at first he's like, oh, you don't, you know, it's good that that's down. We don't need the 
Like we don't need any more chaos, right? And mm -hmm. you're like, stop being a complete dill. Yeah. <laughs> like stop being that way. Like this, like this girl is. Oh, and I, I love the scene, or I think it was in the first episode or the first two episodes where he's like, you know, um, are how old are you? Like she's yeah. so much older than her her years. But yes. here they're really having conversations like two adults, and especially on that scene where they're in the truck or whatever, and you're seeing little like images of of his previous warm presence come out and like hey it's gonna be okay it's this and that and it's nice to see those things and so you're just like come on like that's the obi-wan we want all the time mm -hmm. and so you're just like it, it coming out slowly like we're getting there but and it, but it's great to see those things i love this episode yeah, yeah i mean we're really getting from a place of darkness into like what will be ben kenobi in a new hope because ben kenobi in a new hope he's not like down he's not depressed mm. No, he's kind of upbeat. He's he's nice. He's kind of upbeat. He's settled into his life. He he's yeah. like maintained contact with Luke, and he knows like you know what's coming. He's resolved. He's learned to force ghost. He's transcended. Um, and you see, I like seeing this duel and how rattled Obi Wan is, and always remembering the context of A New Hope about when he goes to face Vader in A New Hope. Like he is Zen. He's he knows like he's going to die. He's not scared. He's in Vader again. People are saying like Vader's cat and mousing it. Like, why didn't he just send his troopers in to give him fire? Like Vader doesn't rush this. He's not trying to just slaughter Obi-Wan quickly. Like if you go back and watch A New Hope again, like, you know, most of that duel is him talking. He wants yeah. to kind of emotionally and mentally kind of conquer this guy first. You know, he wants to prove himself. He says this the whole I was a student. Now I'm the master. You know, you you know, all that thing. It's a whole kind of proving that he's better than Obi-Wan, you know, is a whole thing for him. So it's not just a kill about it that, uh, yeah. But um, yeah, and no, after Rogue One, I did not need Vader to make a high ground pun while holding Obi-Wan over the fire. <laughs> yeah, but uh, I mean, Jim Viscardi, who belongs in podcast jail for saying things like this, was Wait. complaining about James Earl Jones's voice be, being that, like being back, and people were criticizing that. Really? I won't mention other names in the comic book offices, but man, y'all can't enjoy nothing. Wait, I'm sorry, what? I didn't you know, know that. Man, you know where we work. You know how it goes sometimes. You know uh, what happens. People complain about everything. Who the uh, heck on this pod right now? Oh my god, no way! Someone was complaining about James Earl freaking Jones. <laughs> yeah. You know, oh, I mean, God. I'm just telling you, I'm just telling you the things I, I may or may not know, <laughs> but uh, I have no it's complaints. John Romita, but oh no, James Earl Jones is too far. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> yeah, I'm not complaining at all. I love James Earl Jones. I love the combined Vader of Hayden Christensen and, and James Earl Jones because Christensen can still, it's still, it's not just a generic person. I can, you know, he's still conveying mm -hmm. through this suit, yeah, for through sure. his movements through the way he just kind of acts and the voice is just a voiceover and it just makes it all complete. So, yep. Yeah, man, if we were complaining and worried about Obi-Wan, I'm not so worried anymore. And uh, yeah, this this was a kind of real turnaround episode for me, and and I'm down with this series. So Same. kudos. Good things on Star Wars front right now. Yeah, buddy. We All right, we're going to take, take a break. break. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to real, real quick. Let's just get this out of the way because it is related. Uh, yeah, so, you know, oh. this is a big turnaround week. Also, I, I went in hard on Stranger Things 4 last week. I said that episode one was lame. I thought it was just a recap episode. I wasn't really <laughs> down with it. I thought Stranger Things might have passed its prime. I went, I went off on a branch. I mean, it was a long week last week, and I was tired. But uh, I, you know, I was sick a lot of this week, and I was bedridden. And lo and behold, the good Lord had, you know, had to put me in front of the TV and say, "You guess what you have to do this week? <laughs> Nothing except watch Stranger Things." <laughs> So I sat back and that's all I had to do. And man, it, it got me through. Stranger Things 4 is by far the best of the series. Good, man. Uh, well Yay. written, so well written. And just how everything kind of comes together by the end was was really good. They really just, Obsessed. the mythos. Yeah, the mythos of it just keeps getting better and better and more interesting. And uh, yeah, this was this was real good stuff. The Duffer Brothers put together a real good season and I can't wait to see what the finale is all about. Oh my about. gosh. So. I can't even, I hate that we have to wait though. How do you guys feel about that? I mean, it's smart. They do it on these holiday weekends when we're going to be like kind of just looking for something to binge and yeah. Yeah, July 4th weekend. Y'all I'll see you afterwards. Cause you know, I'm going to be stranger <laughs> things. In it, so yeah, we need to do a, uh, a spoilery, uh, 
talk through of everything that happened here probably what i would say next week would be enough time right everyone had made it through or like right episodes. before they drop the next two or right before yeah they drop the next i cool. give everybody time but yeah man it's i i'm in on this I yeah love and it. that episode four was whoo yeah. yeah i don't and even she, remember what was in each episode but i've just episode I four was like night. really kind of like the first arc finale mm -hmm. um that was like the whole max thing yeah I mean, yeah, it's it, it's just it just all is playing out so well. It's so good. And the last episode before, you know, the the two come out is just like insane. Oh, yeah. So good. It's like head explosion. Ah, I'm so excited. <laughs> so, yeah. Speaking of head explosions. So that's me eating pearl on Stranger Things 4. And when we get back, we're going to talk head explosions because the boys season three is back. So when we come back, we're going to have another guest with us and we're going to start talking the boys season three and comics, and wrestling. So stay tuned for all of that. Back at it. <laughs> You're I need muted. A lightsaber. I need a lightsaber. And he's muted. Welcome back to Comic Book Nation. <laughs> wow, I just blew that whole intro. Wow. You're that so was great. Good. I left it muted, blew my whole intro. I just had a I don't have a saber. Game. All I have is a Grogu. I oh, you gotta get your saber game up, bro. You gotta get your saber game up. That <laughs> was Grogu. All right. All right. So we're back, but it's not Star Wars anymore. We're going to go to a much darker and depraved place than that. Somehow. Which is The Boys Season 3. Yeah, so buddy. I made the mistake of staying up really late last night and oh, watching all three God. episodes of The Boys Season 3, which explains why I'm in the condition I'm in today. Uh, because, you know, whew, I have, I forgot what The Boys is like, man. It's been a it's been a minute, and this season starts off even wilder than I think any other season has. <laughs> and yeah, it is it is a lot. But uh, I'm happy it's back because I, I also feel like Stranger Things, the boys, has gotten better. I agree. Yep. I think the I writer's agree. tighter. I think the character arcs, now that everybody's settled in, are a little bit clearer. And just, I don't think there's anything very extraneous right now. Possibly one character, I mean, the A-Train stuff, but I feel like that's going to come back around. He's such a character who's embedded in the show anyway. But um, yeah, I mean, the shock, the humor, the action, the gore, the, you know, unabashed kind of sexual extremes. It's all here and uh, it all hits well still. And that's something to say for any show, streaming show in its third season, that we can still see this stuff and still feel it. And not just, especially in a case like The Boys not feel like it's just here and by the way because we just he just crept in our dms over here and we didn't introduce him forgot you were here man connor yeah. casey's with us welcome solid intro there Yay, <laughs> Yo. Connor, Yo. let's go most people on this show get get big intro intros after your hundredth intro you're just kind of here you're just kind of like we our fourth love host. having you here yeah you're yes. just like the fourth you're, part of, you're one of us one yeah, of us like, it doesn't one even register us. that you're here sometimes i'm just one like yeah yeah us. my regular coast here <laughs> uh yeah but connor casey's with us because we have if you if you missed it before i said we talk in wrestling you know the man's contractually obligated to handle to make sure we don't screw up any wrestling but stuff, I, so. I i added it to my contract when there's boys conversation i i have to tag myself in 
So yeah, no, I mean, that's yes. why uh, that's what reminded me that you were. I was like, yeah, you know who always watches this Connor? And I was like, oh, there he it's is. One, there, look at that. It's one of the best how that works. shows on streaming. I always, yep. I always loved it. I was gonna say television. I was like, oh, hey, I had to correct myself. But yeah, <laughs> no, I, it shows. So I even wrote in the layout, literally, like the first ten minutes of this of this season are just like classic at this point boys i i went from watching i forgot what i was watching before and then i jumped into the <laughs> jumped into the show and i went oh yeah that week like that'll wake you up it's like it's just oh it's just like gosh. shocks you back into okay i know what i'm in for i this series is so good man and it and i love when the boys is one of those things that actually does time jumps really well it's like the time jump in between season two and season three it's just a, not that long i don't think it's that long but it just gives it enough space to put people in different places and put different chess pieces across the board and then brings them together in interesting ways. So, I mean, I, the show is so good. The show mm -hmm. is so good. Matt, let, let me ask you this. Kofi, I want to get your thoughts on this, too. You know, in, in the first 10 minutes, we get some wonderful commentary on a, a release the Snyder Cut and maybe the most <laughs> effed up image I've ever seen put to screen. <laughs> That being said, after three episodes, I can't help but wonder if the show needs to start heading towards the end game, because we can only see the, the crazy depravity so much, and it, it does get worse as the season goes. We can only see Homelander walk around saying, I'm going to do it. I'm going to freaking lose my mind. And he, he inches that way forward, but we're all kind of looking there. Okay, are you, if you're going to do it, do it. We can only watch Huey be helpless and you know self-destruct his life again th this is the third season row we've seen it happen do we need to start getting towards the end game here do, do we need to start hitting towards the, the well, ultimate an, finale of this you're, you're hit on an entry point because i stopped to introduce you but i was going towards something which was the boys is getting to an interesting pivot point which is soon we're going to outlast the source material on this mm -hmm. and what happens after that because this is like one of if not amazon's like biggest hit and yeah, I don't think you can keep recycling the Homelander stories forever, but I think you got to head to the end game of that. But I'm not sure you have to end this whole series. I'm not sure there's not room for the boys itself right. to continue or like, to I, go into different universe directions, you know, spinoffs, prequels, you know, all that stuff. I, I would hate this to go the route of like Arrow or the Flash where it just stays around too long. I agree. And, but, I, but I think too long is not, you know theoretical four season right i i don't think four seasons is too long for the boys i mean arrow was around for what eight no eight right yeah so like and the flash is still going and right? there's a so, bajillion episodes in each yeah there's season. so many episodes like i think we're not there yet but i do think that this is a series that yes cannot go on in perpetuity like it, it does need to move towards an end point we do need to kind of you know, get to a point where we're okay with taking out some of our core characters, like mm -hmm. it, like Homelander, like some of those linchpins of the show. It needs to be okay that we say goodbye to them so we can move things forward and really bring some kind of much needed change. I'm not ready yet for yeah. that. So don't give me like, I'm not saying that as of right now, I, I want Homelander to go because I, I enjoy that because they do enough character work in between those big things for me to still get stuff out of those constant you know his off his rocker but like is he gonna go that far and and his pivot points all over the place they're, they're still interesting to me but i do agree with you we do need to start kind of we've been kicking the can down the road a little bit mm -hmm. and once we start really getting to the point where there's no more material to really just like build everything around you do need to then grow your own way and that means getting rid of some key parts and maybe bringing some new things in. So I don't. I'm not bored yet. I found I love the first three episodes of this, but I do agree. I think, but I think the boys itself. It's possible that they're already kind of setting that up at the end For of sure. the first episode, where you know there is a conversation without spoilers between Butcher and Homelander that you could take to say, yeah, this is just basically putting the rails on what mm -hmm. is going to be the straight so shot. Let, let me ask you, Kofi, did that conversation actually happen? Or is Butcher just losing his mind? Because 
as the season progresses, we get the indication he is off his rocker at a few points. I'm not sure, and you might have spoiled something fun for me, so I do not know. Just Wait as I'm watching my I've only now. seen the first three, so I don't know Connor. if that gets confirmed later. But you know, I mean, he yeah, he's off his rocker, but I think that was a real conversation between them. Okay. Like I took it to be a real conversation, and you know, the scary part is when he looks back and Homelander's gone. It's just a implication that yeah, this dude could be whacked out enough to just show up in your house, rip you apart, and be gone again. And it could be that quick. But um, either way, I think it is kind of setting up the character arcs for these two are going to go at each other. And they've been playing. I mean, that's the premise, right, of the opening of the season. Everybody's been trying to live a new life, <laughs> do all this stuff, but it ain't going to work. And, yeah, this destructive thing we're on is is where we're going with it. And so I'm down for that. But, uh, uh, yeah, if, if it's still happening in season seven, by then, yeah, I won't be. I won't be here. I won't be here. I'll be off to other things, you know? So, uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't imagine no Homelander personally, but that's just, he's like well, psychopath. Like even if he turns around and like yeah. becomes better or oh, is like, we're, I don't we're know. way past that. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Just something. And also I cannot stop singing Soldier Boy like every single time. I'm like, watch me, Greg, it, watch me roll. <laughs> every single time they say Soldier Boy, I'm like, God, I cannot. Please stop saying Soldier Boy. <laughs> Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy, Soldier Boy is the type who's going to try to sue the boys or something because he's going to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thing, man. That was my <laughs> name first. Drake yeah. stole my style. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Soulja Boy. Oh, dear. Please don't. don't I, I hadn't associated those two things, and now I feel like I oh, no. get, get I seriously I question the guest list for today. We should just have Bonnie run this whole show with me and Matt or something. <laughs> you guys. Ooh. Man. <laughs> so, okay. So, Janelle, did you like the overall? Absolutely. Like, you, I mean, okay. it just, it feels, and it's, it I need you. Yes. <laughs> Watch me. Yeah. I, uh, it, it aligns perfectly with the other seasons. Um, it's very entertaining and great. <laughs> I do not know the source material. I am not bothered at all by more Homelander. And like, I feel like he's just getting started because he's turning around his, uh, actually we're not going to spoil anyways. Uh, I think he's just getting started on a new, journey after episode three so i i would like to see where that goes and he might live up to expectations that certain people had on him um and become even more crazed <laughs> i'm just yeah. very excited about see i hate him so much yeah but he's so good at making me hate him i just i i don't think i've hated a character on a show more than him like he just scares me so bad and he's so good at playing that part my gosh well i think that's what i like about homelander is he's like one part obviously my megomaniacal villain but he's also like anthony Starr does a good job of just reminding you that he is like he says at one point he is just a kid he's just a test yeah. tube baby who has like no emotional maturity no actual like family or comforting he's a product mm -hmm. and like you know he's hitting that midlife point where he's realizing he's a product and mm -hmm. he's flipping out and like yeah and he does it to make it like he's evil but he has enough of that tragic side that you're like oh sometimes you're like yeah feel bad for home <laughs> like, yes it sucks but then he does something crazy and you're like oh yeah that's not a good guy yeah um, yeah, he is a sociopath. So he's even manipulating us. Yeah. So and he's also played by like one of the nicest guys. <laughs> yeah. I know. I feel so bad for him. Like in a if I ran into him in a grocery store, I'd be like, <laughs> like one of the nicest out. interviews I've ever had, and like so nice. And you play like the most depraved dude. On TV. <laughs> well, that's, that's the way amazing. it works, man. Nice guys can play the most depraved ones. Smart ones play the best dumb ones. Like it's just irony. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Most. Most like the best dumb actors are people like in Mensa and stuff. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah, it's nuts. But uh, yeah, he's so good in this. And like, yeah, the boys hasn't lost a step. Carl Urban is still killing it. And it's just this is just a showcase of people who deserve to get like good breaks. Like most of this yeah. cast is people who have like needed a good break, just like this show. Like Carl Urban, like Anthony Starr, Jesse T. Usher. Uh, mm -hmm. I forget the woman who plays Maeve, but she was great on Hell on Wheels with Anson oh, Mount yeah. before. She did this, um, like, yeah, and uh, Starlight, you know, Dennis Quaid's son, you know, everybody. I'm doing real good here. Showing real good <laughs> love of this. But, uh, 
Yeah, and Jen, Gina, Gina Carlo Esp Esposito, always just holding everything down. So Boys is back on Amazon Prime. I've decided I do not have enough clout in this industry until I get two Ashleys on my team. Like I need a two Ashley squad mm -hmm. on my team. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'd be like, yo, don't talk to me. Talk to my girl. Talk to Ashley. Talk to Ashley. Ashley, right? too. Yeah, yeah. I need Ashley. Amazing. Yeah. Oh, my God. So, so uh, yeah, yeah. Up on Amazon Prime, the boys right now, you guys got nothing to complain about. If you are bored this weekend, I don't want to hear it. Go yeah, seriously. Room, turn on Obi-Wan. Turn on Stranger <laughs> Things. Turn on the boys. You could be good for an entire eight-hour stretch of day. Yeah. You're done. And We're you back. Yeah, and that's just Do you guys remember oh. season two and season three of this show? I was almost dying. We had nothing. We were sitting yeah. here talking about the air. We're like, man, isn't the air nice today, guys? <laughs> Doesn't it remind you of Superman? <laughs> now we have everything. And Miss Marvel's coming. That's right. Yeah, it is. Those were, those were dark the, times, man. Listen to what the man said. Don't we were talking about worry. Comics. Be happy. <laughs> okay? Right. Don't worry. Be happy now. Uh, Be happy about comics. Yay! Yeah. Moving Thank on. you, Janelle. Thank you, Janelle. <laughs> what a wonderful segue. <laughs> yeah, let's go from that to the one about where everybody's dead. Wow, really? That's how you're gonna set me up? Jeez. Yeah, you guys well, made I mean, it sound like wrong. a happy transition, but that's exactly what you're about to jump into. Mm -hmm. you're, you're so, hey wrong. guys, your favorite heroes are all dead <laughs> in this new comic series, and everybody's <laughs> reacting to it. Let's talk yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah. So, Justice League. I mean, he's not wrong. Justice League: Road to Dark Crisis number one is the uh, first book. <laughs> of the week and yeah this is very much a world without superman this is a take you know kind of take on that and by the way the first story is is dan jurgen's artwork so it was just such a nostalgia trip for me yeah if you're a fan of of those kind of that 90s death of superman whole thing if you have one of those copies bagged up somewhere uh you will you will love this first story arc uh this first story in this which is a series of short stories and this one is nightwing uh and jonathan kent and it's just a great it's a great back and forth between them because you see just two v different views on death in the dcu right like nightwing's been here done that he's seen his batman has supposedly died 90 times he's seen all these heroes die and come back in some kind of crazy way and he's just so kind of he's processing it like that so like when jonathan's like hey like, you know, what do we do? Like, he's, he's trying to figure out what the next step is. <laughs> and Nightwing's just like, eh, it'll, it'll work out. You know, they'll, they'll come back around. And then there's just a really great conversation between them about kind of learning things from both sides, of taking some of that experience, but also maybe coming to terms that maybe they are gone this time. And there's just a lot of great stuff in that first story. And there's a, there's a couple of really great parts in here. Um, there's a Batman story towards the end, which is, again, nothing to do with Batman's not in it. But it's Nocturna and spoiler, and it's also just great to see characters like that utilized. But they're just having this talk of like this world without heroes. And you get a couple different viewpoints on this. You also get a very much needed kind of emotional tether for Pariah, because of course he is the reason all this is happening. And you you get some context there. Though in our conversation with Joshua Williamson, maybe not everything in that is to be believed. There's a little bit of that. Did it happen? Did it not? So some really interesting stuff here. So I thought as far as kind of prologues and tie-ins go to Dark Crisis, which hits next week, I believe, um, I thought this was really this was really entertaining and this was really good. So for me, uh, that's what I got of it. What would you guys think? I think um, it was an interesting piece. I didn't find it thrilling. Like it didn't make me want to get into Dark Crisis. Uh, there was only a couple things that made me want to get in. Oh, no, that wasn't even this comic. I think that was Shadow War Omega. That was even much better <laughs> needing a dark crisis than this. Because uh, I read, I like read everything this week. Like I said, I was down. Um, so all I had to do was read. But uh, <laughs> yeah, this wasn't my favorite. Uh, I love Dan Jurgens, like when he draws like back in the day. Yeah. I'm not a fan of these back in the day kind of mm -hmm. art styles coming back. They just look, look rough now. The hairstyles, I was like, I couldn't get, I love the John Kent because you know, they tend to pair Damien and John because they're biological sons of Batman and yeah. Superman. But the Nightwing and John made more sense to me. I was like, okay, like that actually makes a lot of sense because they are like these kind of first kids of these two mm -hmm. heroes and most imprinted by their legacy and all that stuff. You know, they both have worn, you know, Damien's never worn the bat cow, you know, Dick has. And, you know, it, it's just an interesting dynamic. So I love the conversation but I was just like, man, bro, I can't get, I get your art styles old, but you got to know the hairstyles have changed. 
Like that coif <laughs> is really distracting me. Like Nightwing's coif was really bothering me. It's all I, was point, just man. Like, I was like, no, man, I can't do this. Like if I was talking to this guy on the street, I'd be like, yo, dude, like what's wrong with this dude? Like, is he going to a disco like party later? Like what's happening here? So yeah, you got to update the hairstyles. Like, just like I can't see nineties, you know, people draw with their crazy flamboyant costumes and stuff. It's like, bro, none of that stuff is functional. Like, come on, leave that stuff in the nineties where it belongs. I get that. I totally Well, no maggots coming back. So I don't know why I'm thinking of that right now, but that's hey. good. Yeah. Um, yeah, and also uh, love the Aquaman Green Lantern spot in here. That was interesting. Yeah. yeah, I mean, there were there. I will say it for this book. There were very interesting pairings, and each of them was kind of y- unique and fun to see. Um, some of them were just boring. Like the Pariah story sucked. I'm sorry. Like that was just boring. Uh, I, 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 not, I'm not arguing with you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but like the Flash story, I really that liked. Was great. Um, yeah, whack a mole. I'm just a sucker for Aquaman. Wally West, man. I just love, although Wally West. they did. I was like, y'all just pulled some Star Trek BS out of your butts for that Aquaman story because they're like, how are we going to solve this? We're going to build a centrifuge, then we're going to separate this apparatus. I was like, what are you doing? I was like, what is this thing? And what are you doing? And how did you just solve the problem? I was like, whatever, Star Trek, you know, okay. I yeah, understand. by the way, I still don't actually know how that got solved. I'm not gonna yeah. lie. I was like, I, I, read I, I, re- I reread that three yeah. times. It went. I still don't understand. <laughs> exactly. Three times. Was like, oh, I might just be stupid, though. I might just be stupid. I'm not gonna like credit Janelle. What do you think? No, you're not stupid. Okay. <laughs> it's like, uh, yeah, I'm I'm with Kofi on this one. Like, it wasn't like my favorite favorite, but it obviously like didn't bother me in any way. It was. It's interesting to see where it's going, and uh, you know, I definitely didn't mind it, and I'm really happy that we're doing some DC content that isn't just Batman, like really, because I like seeing and getting to know other characters within the comic books, because my experience with like Nightwing and, and a lot of these characters are like the TV shows. Mm -hmm. Um, So I really like seeing them kind of have like a feature and a time to shine and get to know who they are. And that's nice. Yeah, agreed. So let's move, man. I, I now looking at this comic, so this is super dark. It starts out super dark. So let's go with the <laughs> closet. Number one is the second book of the week. Look, man, James, James Tinian can write some horror. He's getting better. I mean, man's got it. Man's got a talent. Okay. <laughs> he can There's... write. No, let's give him his real flowers. Like yeah. James Tinian is doing a great job writing talky horror. Like yes. it's horror, but a, yes. it's so much dialogue, but it's good dialogue. Thank and it's you. it's ironically the thing we kind of criticized him for in Batman. When yeah. he did Batman, we we're like, bro, this is a whole novel we're reading. <laughs> like it's just long conversations of Batman. It's like a Tarantino film, but it, it works because this week was a closet. It was another issue of Last House, yep. on the, Nice House on the Lake. And those were been highlights of my week, you know? Yeah, I got, well, you know what? I think you put it, I think you put it best because we did, we did find it hard to adjust like that style didn't quite coalesce with Batman right off the bat. It took some time before we really got in those and his work outside of that has been fantastic, especially in this, this genre, because like something is killing the children is another, it's excellent every freaking month. That is a fantastic book. And it's, it's mostly dialogue. There's a couple of times where you see a creature or, or there's a battle or something, but those are, spread out and and the closet is actually told mostly through no dialogue there is not there's whole parts of this book that don't have any dialogue but it's so effectively told uh and i'm gonna uh i need to look at the artist because i'm blanking on the artist right now so that's on me but wonderful artwork like it's it's really interesting look and it kind of fits too within the other realm of his other books. They, they all have this kind of similar, like very tension heavy feel. It's a lot of shadow. It plays with that. And I'm still not a hundred percent on what everything that's happening. And that's on, I feel like that's on purpose, but essentially this child is very scared of something in his closet. And throughout the whole book, it's, you know, the parents and it's the dad really kind of talking about how he can't seem to like, get him to shake that and he always wants to sleep with them and things like that and then you see eventually oh hey here's what the kid is seeing and it's creepy as hell <laughs> it's very creepy and then it ends in a very like uh for me I, I hate i hate endings like this in horror movies like skeleton key has this kind of ending where it's a bad ending whereas like 
the spirit or whatever isn't dead in the end. It's like, you know, and you're just like, oh, I hate feeling that way with, with horror stuff. And this kind of has a similar thing on that as we go forward. Luckily, it's just the first issue. But I was captivated, man. I'm going to watch. I'm going to read this moving forward. I don't know. What do you think, Janelle? Uh, I didn't know what was happening. <laughs> I was very, ca- I'm like, what am I reading? What is this? Like, is a superhero going to pop out of the closet? Or is it, I was very confused and I didn't really know what this was. And I liked that <laughs> and it, it paid <laughs> off. It definitely paid off. And I really enjoyed it. Just, it was a completely different type of comic book than what we normally read. And I really was happy to try out something new and it was really enjoyable, but terrifying Yes, at the same time. So but good. yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I, I need to know what's happening from here. <laughs> like I need to know where we go from here. Yeah, very, very true. So let's move into the poll winner. And again, thank you everyone for, for voting. And to some Darth Vader, number 23. Kofi, you want to take this one? Yeah. Uh, Vader teams up with, I think her name is Sabrine. Sabine? Sabrine? I forget what her name is. One of Padme's old handmaids that has been kind of featured in the Darth Vader series. Uh, and uh, yeah, they are going to do some stuff. I actually forget what happens in this issue. I love this issue, by the way. I, I have no, I remember it liking it, it, but again, yeah. I had nothing to do but read this week. So I, I read so much. And this was one of the first. It's always one of the first. And especially this week, I read it because obviously of, you know, Obi-Wan made me be like, ooh, more Veda. So I uh, did go through it. But uh, let me pull it up here for a minute so I can actually say like the right stuff. Yeah, so this has been an interesting story because... Sabe um, is one of Padme's old handmaids, one of the only ones that survived. She's one of the only, and she has been secretly tracking down and working to figure out like Vader's origin. And she figures out that he's Anakin and she uses the knowledge of how he felt about Padme and that she looks like Padme to kind of, she's one of the few people who's not scared of him and like yeah. will ally with him. And they've been kind of taking on Crimson Dawn in there's a whole kind of story about that, but it's just a good Vader story. And like I said, Star Wars comics have done this. Um, you know, Hayden Christensen has said he would do a Darth Vader series, and there's plenty of room for it because Star Wars comics is, I mean, I, th- I don't even know how many volumes of Vader comics we now have going back to the mid 2010s, and they're all excellent. Yeah. Like, and he, for a character who hardly talks and like hardly does anything, <laughs> and they're all just super duper yeah. excellent. And just getting to know Vader as a character has been so interesting because you can see Anakin, you know, in there in the way Anakin did things, but behind this veil of, you know, a cold, detached, sociopathic version of him. Uh, But they're still in and they do a great job of making you see more and more hints of how Vader was conflicted, how there was still good inside of him, how he still had those embers of knowing, wanting to be with Luke, still having that feeling for Padme and all that stuff and his beef with the emperor who just tortured his <laughs> tortures his ass like all the time. Um, and it's good stuff. So I'm enjoying this comic and I'm enjoying this arc because Sabe has been kind of an interesting character. And there's even some like great moments where he, they go back and meet some of Anakin's old childhood friends yeah. and Vader kind of recognizes them and saves them. And it's just, but just, it's own, by the way, what a backhanded own that was, when he walks away from them and he like asked them a question. I can't remember how he phrases it. He asked them a question and they're like, oh, no, or something. He's like, yeah, of course you can. You can't handle yourselves. Like, I have oh, yeah. to do this for you. It's such an own. And I was like, damn. As you made co- as you made clear, you <laughs> can do nothing. <laughs> that's such <laughs> yeah, an own, like, Yo, can we help you? He's like, nah, bro. No, but that's the great thing is like the comics really nail how Vader talks to people, which is yeah. just this dismissive, like, I'm all powerful, like. You guys are worms, like, you know, don't mess with me type deal. And he's straight up just the dude is like, do as I say. If you mess up, I'm murdering you. If you don't do it, I'm murdering you. In fact, you're going to have to work very hard to stay alive. And just seeing other characters like Ochi of Bastoon and, you know, other people working for him just crap themselves for working for Darth Vader is half the fun, which you see in Obi-Wan with the Inquisitors, right? They're ready to eat themselves just to, you know, stay on his good side. So... Vader Comics, check it out. If you're on a Vader high right now this week, be sure to check that out. Did you dig this one too, Janelle? Yeah, I actually really, I like seeing Vader in a different light. And uh, at first, again, I didn't really know what was happening. I was kind of like, I couldn't, I didn't know where we were or what was happening. I didn't understand the Padme thing. I had no idea who she was, but I liked that he was working with her. And I, I didn't, 
understand, but now I do. So <laughs> sometimes you just have to ask your friends that are big fans of things to explain. And it, it works out really nicely. <laughs> yeah, no, I, my favorite scene is actually when he's, when, when she's telling him he, she knows who he is and she's yeah. explaining all the things that led up to that. And he's like, you, you were like big on order. Darth Vader is huge on order. You vanished. He popped up. Yeah. You tried to like open her casket. Like he's going, she's going through all the things. And he's like, yeah. I'm, I'm not stupid, you know? And yeah, like, she, yeah, yeah. Which, I mean, there's a reason why she was a Padme. A Padme yeah, you know, it's great. Double, body double because mm -hmm. she's very much like her and it reminds yeah. him of her. And it's, and it's funny because you're right. She just looks right in my face. She's like, bro, don't lie to me. Like I've done the work. Like, <laughs> and, and in the way that only a woman could pull out receipts, like somebody <laughs> who's like, you're almost like your girlfriend or ex be like, yo, I got receipts right yeah. here. And, um, and yeah. then he's just like, what do you want? And it's like, yeah, okay, yeah. you can't, you can't say anything to that. She's got you, man. It's, it makes sense. Um, oh, and worry not, Damon, because yes, we're going to talk about our last book of the week, Captain Marvel number thirty-eight, and this is a fitting way to end this because, thank the Lord, it's light, it's light and happy. <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna talk about this is binary. This is uh, Captain Marvel has has vanished for the majority of the issue. We actually don't see Carol, and binary is here, just still getting used to life, and this is just so. It, this one, this book has one of the best supporting casts in comics because, like, this whole book is literally just binary and Spider Woman and Hazmat, and like, you get chime ins from like L'Oreal and a bunch of people just like helping binary get used to life here and still explaining things. And the dialogue is just so fun and charming. There, there's, there's this whole thing like so, someone teaches her a word, and like Jessica Drew is like, oh my god, don't teach her that word because she doesn't like know what that means. And then they have this whole conversation. <laughs> it's just so fun. And there's some genuine moments here too of like growth for her because she doesn't really know what she is, right? She's this kind of energy from Carol that has formed into a being and there's still a lot of mystery there and she's also trying to find herself because people are just calling her Captain Marvel or oh is that Carol's new look is she on fire now like they don't understand who this person is and she's like no I'm my own person so there's some of that and then we get to this amazing sequence later that has like her in this alien world and Carol's like this monster hunter and there's this whole thing and you're like oh my god what is this and then it it twists you and you don't know where that lies. And then there's the hook for the next issue. I thought this was like really well put together, but the majority of the issue is just really fun. Just like, it makes you smile. It's, it's so good. Janelle, what do you think? Yeah, same. Uh, it is so lighthearted and cute and um, just a fun, quick read that will have you chuckle from time to time. And I love that. I think that's really refreshing and different. And it's nice to see, like, this is something that you can absolutely have like very, very young children get into comic books with. And that's really nice um, because I know some of them are kind of heavy. Like we talk about the boys and like things like yeah. that. And like yeah. this is just really refreshing. So, yeah. And yeah. then you also get the tie in at the end to the Doctor Strange magic world stuff that has yeah. been teased along the way. So, long time readers have stuff to kind of sink their teeth into mm -hmm. and move forward with. And then you just have a really fun, lighthearted book. Uh, so, yeah, so that is comics this week. I mean, I don't know why you're stopping talking. You're next. Well, I was going <laughs> to let you do the intro. You always do such an awesome wrestling intro. I was gonna Matt, let you do continue. It. Oh, jeez. God. <laughs> We're moving into wrestling. She killing it with the intro today, Gobi. We're moving it. into to wrestling. Of course, this weekend is a big one. We actually have an NXT event in your house on Saturday. And then we have... The big attraction, WWE Hell in a Cell, on Sunday. You will catch all of our coverage here on comicbook.com. But, Connor, uh, what's going on this week? Man, you, you, you said big event on Sunday, and I, I just kind of had to wince there. For you, a know, second. you know. Because <laughs> big is a, is a relative term, Matt. See, guys, if you haven't been following along, this is the second pay-per-view in a row with no world championship match, which is something that hardly ever happens. I had to dive through the uh, – the old Wikipedia to see when the last time it had happened in back-to-back -back months. Uh, the answer was 2018, but if you're looking for three straight pay-per-views, you got to go back to the Hogan era of the mid eighties, which is, uh, I hope this, this trend manages to break next week. But basically what we have had since WrestleMania is a complete lack of momentum for both raw and SmackDown. Matt, you can attest to how SmackDown has been these past few months. Roman's just kind of there holding both titles, not defending them against anyone. And it doesn't really seem like anybody's ready to step up 
and take on the mantle of, hey, I'm the next guy up. Drew is obviously being held off for when they go over to Wales in September. Cody says, hey, I want the WWE Championship, but I'm not even going to look in Roman's general direction. I'm just going to keep fighting Seth over here, even though I've beaten him twice. So, Matt, I want to ask you a question. Is this the biggest mistake WWE has made this year? Is combining the two world championships and then doing nothing with either? Uh, nah. Nah? I don't, I don't see it as big. Here's why. Why? It's mostly because what's the difference between them putting Reigns in a program that you absolutely know he is going to win for two months straight. Like they're going Mm -hmm. to do that at some point, Mm -hmm. but like to me, propping someone up to kind of be his opponent for the month. Isn't we've, we've had that and we've had it with some higher profile names too. Right. I mean, that was like Daniel Bryan did that right before he left and went to AEW. Like we had Cesaro, right. We had some of those programs, but there was at least some people like, Oh, we want to see that matchup. Yeah. Right now, the, the thing is, I'll take that. I see. I'll, I don't I'll, want that. Why? I'll, that's I'll a waste take, of space. I'll take some sort of forward momentum. That's not. But that's not I forward. Momentum. Ask you to stop calling me that. That's not <laughs> forward momentum, though. That is standing in place. You're just seeing a match happen. Like I'd rather them give shine to other people on the card rather than just a throwaway thing with Reigns. But they've replaced it with nothing. Everyone on Raw is spending three hours a week effectively running in place. But that's a separate issue. That's boring the heck out. No, that is is the issue. No, it has nothing to do with the title. They were spinning in place before. At least someone else was fighting (laughs) for a different title. Ooh, it's getting spicy. But that's a a booking thing. That has nothing to do. Okay, so taking one title, the top title, mind you. I'm not, not acknowledging that it's a thing. But... I would say most people would probably say that we should run a poll. I'd be actually really curious to see what the poll said. But if you could like take away the moment of him holding a both title, that was the natural direction for Reigns. Like that was the next story thing for him. And then we slowly start to dismantle that with someone taking that WWE championship back away. Mm -hmm. Who is that going to be for me? That pick is Cody. Are and we, we're gonna have to wait till November at right. the earliest to even I, motion I don't in that know. direction. I don't know why that nuts. is, but I don't know why that is because I, I don't need the length of time. The moment is what matters, and you have to give sure. the moment a little bit to like actually matter a little bit. So I get like waiting a pay-per-view, but to wait like six months, like, that's to me, that's and, too and, much. And by every account, that's exactly what they're gonna do because it's Riddle, it. then it's Orton, then it's Drew. But and, for you looking into Orton, let okay, let's bring up Riddle and Orton. Sure. Looking into that matchup, Orton versus Reigns is is going to be fun. Orton, I mean, I'm I'm hitting. I've liked Orton more lately than mm. before. Honestly, but he still puts on good matches. You could get around a lot of that if you just have him face Riddle and Orton at the same time. Make it a triple threat. That dynamic alone is way because first of all, Roman does a lot of one on one matches. He does. He never has the opportunity of, hey, Randy, if you pin Riddle, you win, and Roman never gets pinned. And Roman's got to sit back and go, well, crap, that is true. That's more interesting than, oh, I'm going to mow through Riddle one month, mow through Randy the next month. I agree with you. I love that. that Have that triple threat next month, then do Cody at SummerSlam. And then if he's still champion somehow, then do Drew. I agree with you. I like that idea. I I don't think, though, that has all to do with the, the WWE Championship being on Roman. WWE has been hesitant to break. I mean, they already broke them up and put them back together. They've been hesitant to break RK Bro up and have anything kind of be that again. They didn't break him up. Randy's just right, talking. but I'm saying like that's they already kind of toyed with the idea, and people were so like, "No, we like them." Yeah, they're not going to do it. So I don't know if a triple threat works like that. They can they can make it work, but then you'll mm-hmm. have people criticizing. Well, we don't believe it, and it's like, okay, I, well, I'd rather them keep him off. Let whatever happen. And honestly, SmackDown, as far as the bloodline goes, SmackDown's been as interesting around the bloodline thanks to Zami Zayn. Okay, like it's it's still hilarious. That's been great. That's really the momentum. That's kind of it. Is that, no, that's and, really it because Reigns hasn't I, I been defending his title. This, this little debate we're having right now is proving my point because what did we not bring up in this entire thing? The fact that there's a pay-per-view on Sunday in Chicago and it's got one we started spell with match. that. No, that wasn't we, the we've question. been debating this entire time about Roman, <laughs> the bloodline, the titles. Nobody's talking about the card. That was the question know, you I asked. I feel like that's the point, is that the fact that we're talking about Vegas and Nashville, 
and Wales. We're talking about all these shows in the future. It's like everyone kind of forgot this show was happening this weekend. Okay, to there's be fair, one I cell totally match. Did. It's the third in a series where we've already seen Cody win twice. There's a women's championship match where the most interesting thing about the match itself is what's happening with Sasha and Naomi behind the scenes. I don't. Disagree that's an indict. That's kind of an indictment on this weekend. I to be a hundred percent clear. Connor is correct because I actually did forget earlier this week that this was happening. <laughs> <You're so laughs> right. Between totally double or forgot. nothing and dynamite this week, like we've seen six months worth of AEW <laughs> content in like five days, and yet with WWE, it's and eh, we we we've got two shows this weekend. It's like okay, what what you got? Now I am excited for in your house because Why? that actually is going to do what every NXT thing does, which is typically produce really fun matches. Their, their events like this tend to be really fun, really packed with a lot of really solid stuff. And then probably, I don't see a lot of surprises, but I do want this to lead to probably our last question since we talked about Roman for most of the thing. Sure. I will say there are a couple of different title matches here. And the thing we have talked about with Raw and SmackDown is they are both lean on the rosters in certain areas because mm. of releases, injuries, all that. Which is nuts, by the way, because we just got like Oscar back and they've already had some call ups, but it's still lean. There's still not enough people in the tag well, division. It's not so much lean, it's division. that they act like both shows only have 12 people and they refuse to like just bring anybody else in for a week. Right. But even then, they have to build them, right? So, like, we've seen that on the SmackDown women's side, which finally this last week they tried to sort of start to move that in a direction. But like, they mm. have all these people that they don't use on TV. So they're not credible threats yeah. to title picture right so will we see some people move from the nxt roster to raw or smackdown after this event in your house do you think we will i think the creed brothers are already ready i think they can make yeah. the jump i don't think they're i don't think they're jumping brawn they're not giving the title to diet wyatt joe gacy <laughs> uh, if, you get, if you get that joke good on you um i think honestly other than the creeds I don't think there's anybody necessarily ready right now just because of how they've just because of who are they're who they're promoting on the show right now. Yeah. You know, you could bring up Roderick Strong. Cool. He's been doing dark matches for a while, but does that change anything? Not really. Yeah. Um, you could bring up uh, pr you could bring up toxic attraction. I feel like they're ready and I feel like the main roster, you know, is fine with that. I with that idea and a, hey, a women's trio would be fun. Yeah. But I could also see Vince taking one look at and saying, Mandy, you're on your own. These two go do a tag team thing with titles that we for, kind of forgot exist. Yeah, you know, no. I'm worried um, about that. I Well, yeah, especially well, especially now with all the Naomi. I feel like the Naomi and Sasha leaving the titles and all that, we're going to have that tournament. Who knows what the hell is happening with that tournament? What I will say is... It sounds like the is, tournament's already dead. It's already dead, right? <laughs> like, I will say the women's, one week. the women's division does need tag teams. In, in, in both brands right if you're mm. gonna have those titles you need tag teams to fight over them uh i will i think katana collins and Caden carter they've been building them up again in nxt recently so i think they've been more than ready for a minute they're gonna get repackaged anyway like at this point going off of what they're doing in nxt right now as far as character work is whatever because mm -hmm. <laughs> the only the biggest acts are gonna keep their characters they're gonna right. get re overhauled anyway so for them I think they would be fun, little injection of energy, and provide another group because right now there's like what three teams? If I think there's two, yeah. So, so yeah. So, but I think Mandy Rose does come up soon. Uh, I don't think it's here because I think they're going to crown. I mean, right now you look at someone. I, I don't think it's. I don't think it's here, but I do think soon because. Vince sees money in Mandy Rose and her current mm. thing, and she would be a great heel on Raw or SmackDown. So yeah, I think yeah, it would be great. Get, let her drop the title to Roxanne Perez, and let, yep. let's move on here. That's I no, hey, I got that's no problem with that. My pick. I'm good with that. That's right. I, I see we have bored Kofi and Janelle right now. They are <laughs> they are riveted by this. But yeah, we, <laughs> I was just, actually doing wrestling research. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, look, look, at, look at Kofi. Was, full, based on what you were saying, I was trying to catch up silently. I what like seeing debates, so <laughs> yeah, I was getting yeah, they into got, that. I was like, they get spicy. Yeah. Well, hey, full full coverage of in your house and hell in a cell this weekend. Uh, hopefully, it is more eventful than it looks like on paper. Yay! <laughs>
Awesome. Thank you, guys. Way to say it. <laughs> now that I've gone down a wrestling hole, like, thank you, guys. Uh, yeah, WWE this weekend. Uh, what you say? NXT is also this weekend in the house. Some people say NXT ain't the same no mo. And I was really feeling that. That was kind of my, where my research was taking me. I was like, man, what we, remember how hot NXT was? We had, like, what, like, Karrion Cross, Scarlett Bordeaux on here. That was good times, man. Man, they were, man they such happy 36 times. 36 glorious like takeover pay-per-views, and they yeah. threw it all away. Yeah. Hey, wow. hey, hey, hey. Oh, don't hate right. me. You know, Comic Book Nation, we tried to do our part for NXT. For mm -hmm. real. So uh, shout out to NXT. But um, thank you, Connor. Thank you, Matt, for wrestling. Thank you, Bonnie Peace, for coming on and bringing some Star Wars clout to the show. Uh, thank you guys for always tuning in. We are our Comic Book Nation, the one-stop spot for all things geek culture. We're the only show that does this amount of geek culture stuff, guys. Like, I don't think anybody else like is all doing of it. it. Like all of it. Yeah. You don't understand how much prep this takes. Oh my God. And so much reading, so much watching, but uh, we love it. So we love to, and we love to do it with you guys. And I think uh, we're working behind the scenes. We're going to try to get some, uh, I almost said only fans, some kind of fan events like started off. <laughs> Paramount lawyers are coming to my inbox swiftly. But uh, yeah, no, we're not starting an only fans. We're going to start nope. some fan hangout events just so we can like, there's oh so many people God. in the show now that uh. are commenting from, Everybody, just Norin, Damon. Uh, I don't even want to start because I'm going to start missing people, and then people are going to get mad at me. Sir Glean, I see you. I see all you guys. Yeah, we're going to do a fan hangout. Yeah, there's yeah, a lot of good standard. people in this show who always chime in, who always add to the conversation. Danny, the pug, like, yeah, you guys are all out here. So we're going to do something, and maybe we can take some focus time and to uh, talk to you guys. So we're in the planning stages of doing that, and we'll let you guys know what it is. Or we'll just hang out and we'll be able to, you know, shoot the thing for a while uh, and, you know, talk and, you know, get to know each other a little better. So that'd be cool. But we're in the planning stages of arguing amongst ourselves about that. And once we get that all sorted out, we'll get out of that circle. And bring it to <laughs> the, you comments, guys, so. the comments are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. All right. Now we got to do it. No, we don't. We, we, we don't. <laughs> now, now we got it. Got well, it. we'll see how it goes. I mean, talking about the boys going on, this is season four. We'll see what happens between season four and season five of this show. But uh, no, we're not there yet. Um, yeah, so we're going to do some more fan interactive things. Until then, we're on your favorite podcast platforms. Uh, my daughter said, mm, she always sets our little bedroom alarm. All right, so I got to get out of here. This is Comic Book Nation. I have kids. This is what happens. Thank you guys for tuning in. Peace. Bye, guys. <laughs>